Retired General Jack Keane is a Fox News senior strategic analyst. He joins me right now. General, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. I guess this is a response also to the fact that we gave up the Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. Well, I'm a little surprised by the report. I mean, most of it's classified, but if there was a major shift in, in, in our global force structure, it would be revealed here. And certainly improving a couple of airfields is, it, it, I'm, I'm assuming that needs to be done. We're putting more ammunition and logistics there. But we're not coming to grips, in my judgment, with what the real issue is. I mean, China clearly outguns us and outmans us. I mean, they have more ships, more airplanes, more missiles in the region than we do. And common sense tells you if we want to deter them from a conflict in the region, then we have to have forces in the region. We're an ocean away, two weeks from the west coast of the United States. A lot of our bombers are in the United States. They're not in the region. We should be forward deploying submarines, more missiles, and more of our bombers into the region to deter war. We have to make the adjustment after the 9-11 wars to the reality of what we're facing. We've got three major threats. One is China. Second is, is Russia, and the third is Iran. And, and they, that gives us, in my judgment, reason to readjust our force posture and recognize that we have to deter all three of those threats. And that means it's more money. We have to take forces out of the United States, where most of our forces are, and forward deploy them and recognize that what this threat really is. And I don't think this is happening. I'm, I'm surprised by it, to be frank about it. Well, you're right. It's not happening, General. I mean, look at the budget for defense. It, it, it is not increasing at all. We're actually, when you compare it to inflation, seeing a decline in the defense budget in the overall Bernie Sanders budget. So why isn't the administration recognizing these threats are rising and we need to, uh, we need to strengthen? I mean, you yourself has been saying that China uh, is it outguns us, particularly related to the Navy. You've been saying this for over a year. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the budget, I think, is a factor, Marie. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, certainly, that's never going to be stated in the report. But the fiscal constraints on the Defense Department are, are serious. Think, think about these spending bills that you've been discussing, you know, for weeks and months, trillions of dollars being spent on domestic programs. There's two departments in the federal government that are not getting the plus up. One is the Defense Department. It's actually a reduction because it's not accounting for inflation. And the other is the Department of Homeland Security. It was responsible for our domestic security. So there's some, this is a serious issue, and I hope it gets a lot of public exposure here as we're heading towards an eventual improvement of, of, of the defense budget, which should be coming in the next number of several weeks, for sure. And it is right. inadequate. That's exactly right. Yeah. Well, it's inadequate, and it has been inadequate for some time. Let's talk about the other threats, because our audience, I think, understands where we are on China and understands that we are tiptoeing around the Communist Party. For what reason, we want to know? Iran is another issue you just mentioned, and Russia. Let's talk Iran for a moment, making many demands as it resumes nuclear talks with the U.S., as Israel is warning Iran is preparing to enrich weapons-grade uranium, General. You Reaction to these negotiations. I mean, Iran wants to wipe Israel off the map, and we're still negotiating with them to get back into an Iran nuclear deal. Yeah, I mean, we are playing such a weak hand going into these negotiations. I mean, just think about it. When, when we changed administrations, we had Iran on their heels. We had devastating maximum pressure sanctions on them. Their economy was clearly in a tank. We had just killed Qasem Soleimani, who is an iconic leader in Iran, and, and second only to the supreme leader in terms of his power and his impact on the country. Iran knew full well if they started to get out of the box uh, during the Trump presidency, that President Trump was going to push back on him. Here comes the Biden presidency, as opposed to building on that strength and using the Abraham Accords also as part of the foundation and, and the sanctions and the, the pushback on Qasem Soleimani's death. 
What did they do? They walked away from all of that. They're not doing anything to enhance the Abraham Accords. And, and our audience probably doesn't know this, but they eased up on the sanctions that President Trump had imposed. And as a result of it, the Iranian economy, Maria, it, while it's still in the tank, it is recovering slowly, which conditions them yeah. to be tough going in, into these negotiations. And, and it's, it's really mm. sad. I mean, what we're talking about now is the restriction in the nuclear deal on enriched uranium was 3.6 percent. They're at 60 percent right now. Weapons grade is 90. And from there, it would take them X number of months to actually put together a nuclear weapon. So they're, they're using that threat of going to weapons grade as leverage. They want the removal of all the sanctions. And I believe this administration will largely do that. If not give them complete relief immediately, they'll give them most, most of it relieved immediately with the promise there's more to come. And that is just an well, awful you, strategy. That's putting Iran you know, on the path to a nuclear weapon. You make such an important point, General, because the U.S. Treasury has expanded the Syria non-governmental organization's general license. In other words, the day before Thanksgiving, this administration eased sanctions on Assad on Syria. That, that went really largely unnoticed, but they lifted sanctions on Assad the night before Thanksgiving. I mean, look, our adversaries are looking at this administration. They're seeing weakness. Why wouldn't Russia invade Ukraine right now? Why wouldn't China go try to take Taiwan? Are you expecting Russia to act and do something in Ukraine sooner rather than later? Well, certainly Putin, with 100,000 troops there, it, it clearly has options. I think it's likely he may put some troops into Belarus. Um, whether he puts troops into eastern Ukraine, where he already has troops, uh, remain, remains to be seen. I, I think it's very possible. I think it's unlikely he'll try to take control of Ukraine by attacking the capital or, or going into so-called unoccupied Ukraine territory where there are no Russian troops. Okay. But he, what, what this is about, he's testing U.S. resolve and that of our Europeans. He does not want Ukraine yeah. to be a part of NATO. He does not want Ukraine to move economically closer to the European Union. That is the issue. That is why he went into Georgia back in 2008, because we were inviting mm -hmm. Georgia into NATO, and he put his troops there and stopped it cold. That is what is happening yep. here. Wow. He's still trying to undermine NATO, and he's really testing, I think, the resolve of this administration, which he probably has a pretty good feel for, to be quite frank about it, as yeah. he has had exactly. in previous administrations. He's a master at it. So, so does Xi Jinping, frankly, in my view, has a picture of this administration and will do whatever it wants to take advantage of weakness. General, we're going to keep watching all of this. Thanks for the comments on the budget. This is so important as this uh, Congress has only a few days legislative left this year. We'll see if they can make changes to that budget with regard to defense. General Jack Keane will talk soon. Thank you, sir.